Katie, did you use music or rhythms from Flame Song? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 songs that led to huge lawsuits. It's like spot the tune, you know? Mm. Because so many songs are like so many other songs. Explain what, what was happening here. Why were you being sued for sampling their music? And then when the music college came back, they said it was oops upside your head. And so now they have to pay. For this list, we'll be looking at popular songs that were accused of some form of plagiarism leading to lawsuits. Do you think these lawsuits are justified? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Dark Horse, Katy Perry. Katy Perry, with her hit single Dark Horse, was accused by Christian rapper Flame of using the same beats and instrumentals featured on his 2008 song, Joyful Noise. You know what it is? Though the rapper initially won the suit and was awarded $2.8 million for copyright infringement, the ruling was reversed in 2020. In the original ruling, Perry was accused of copying an eight-note ostinato, which is a continually repeated musical rhythm or lyric. A judge in 2020 found that the sequence was not all original or rare, and thus gave the case to Perry. It's a little difficult to hear the similarity between the two tunes, but that might just be to the untrained ear. Number 9. Shaker Maker – Oasis Oasis didn't always just fight amongst themselves as a band. They also had some legal issues to sort out. The 1994 single Shaker Maker may sound familiar. Oasis was sued by 1970s band The New Seekers, the band responsible for I'd Like to Teach the World to Sing, made popular by Coca-Cola commercials. I'd like to teach the world to sing, sing with me. The Seekers won and were awarded half a million dollars for unlawful use of their song. Originally, Shaker Maker was supposed to open with the exact same lyric as the new Seekers song, but Oasis had to change it due to copyright. But they wouldn't notice the melody, right? Well, they did. When asked about his thoughts on the case, Noel Gallagher said, quote, Now we all drink Pepsi. Number 8. Carry On – Lil Nas X Lil Nas X grew to extreme popularity in the 2010s. Unfortunately, with great popularity comes great lawsuits. His 2018 hit single, Carry On, borrowed a little too much from Bobby Caldwell's 1982 song of the same title, and Nas was slapped with a $25 million lawsuit. Basically, and this can easily be heard when comparing both tunes, he borrowed from the 1982 song without permission. The claim is divided into two suits, Nas for unlawful use and Sony Music for punitive damages, citing the label as not properly verifying its artists' songs in the pursuit of fortune. The results of the case have not yet been publicized, but we can't assume it'll end in Nas's favor. Number 7. We Can't Stop – Miley Cyrus we can't stop, and we won't stop. Sometimes the plaintiffs get a little greedy. Miley Cyrus' 2013 single We Can't Stop sounded familiar to Jamaican songwriter Flowergon. He claimed Cyrus' song bears a resemblance to his 1988 song We Run Things in general, as well as borrows from his lyrics. So Flowergon sued for a massive amount of $300 million. The suit was settled in early 2020, however, the details have not been released to the public. The main lyric borrowed was We Run Things, Things No Run We, which Cyrus sang as We Run Things, Things Don't Run We. It's a fairly specific phrase. Other details are scarce, but it's nice to see the little guy come out triumphant sometimes. Number 6. My Sweet Lord – George Harrison there can't be any doubt in anyone's mind that one of the biggest bands in musical history and its members were sued on more than one occasion. Early in George Harrison's solo career, he was sued by Bright Tunes Music Corporation concerning his song My Sweet Lord. My sweet Lord. 
song musically resembles the Chiffon's 1963 hit He's So Fine, and this can be heard by the untrained ear. Harrison claimed to have drawn inspiration from Oh Happy Day, as had He So Fine, and that the former Beatle was aware of the Chiffon's tune. Therefore, it was deemed that Harrison subconsciously borrowed from He's So Fine, yet this doesn't absolve one from copyright infringement. He was ordered to pay the label $1.6 million in 1976. It's, you know, it's something yeah. that I had to uh, treat it, you know, positively or negatively, so I decided to do it this way. Number 5. My Humps, Black Eyed Peas My hump, my hump, my hump, my lovely little lumps Check it out. This one is really down to record label politics. DJ Lynn Tolliver recorded his song, I Need a Freak, in 1983, and had the song registered with BMI as its songwriter. The song was subsequently lent out for use despite Tolliver's legal efforts to put a stop to it. I need a freak with long, long hair. The producer responsible for lending the track ignored Tolliver and continued. Thus, it was sampled by the Black Eyed Peas. She's got me The court case was riddled with the producer's multiple versions of the story, but ultimately, Tolliver was awarded $1.2 million. This is one of those cases where the band was really not at fault. Number 4. Thinking Out Loud – Ed Sheeran Take me into your loving arms. Ed Sheeran is no stranger to lawsuits. In the same year, he had two major suits going on, the first being his song Photograph, accused of blatantly stealing, at some points note for note, from Matt Cardle's song Amazing. The second was for his song from the same album, Thinking Out Loud. Maybe we found love right Sheeran was slapped with a multi-million dollar lawsuit in 2018 for allegedly borrowing a little too heavily from Marvin Gaye's Let's Get It On, notably in the drum and bass rhythm arrangements. In March of 2021, Sheeran attempted to have the case dismissed, but his bid was rejected by a U.S. district judge who stated that Sheeran must face the charges against him. And we found love right where we are. Number 3. Ice Ice Baby – Vanilla Ice, ice, ice the results of this one might irk a few fans of the legendary band Queen. Back in 1990, Vanilla Ice had teens stopping, collaborating, and listening to his hit single Ice Ice Baby. However, anyone with any knowledge of classic rock recognized that bass line right away. It was ripped directly from Queen and David Bowie's collaborative 1981 song, Under Pressure. Ice soon found himself being sued by both Queen and Bowie. Ice claimed that he avoided the suit by purchasing the rights to Under Pressure. So they didn't have the actual rights to it, so I went to Brian May and I actually bought the song. And, and, the guitar and, player for Queen. Yeah, but I actually own the song. So I bought it like Michael Jackson owns the Beatles. It was cheaper than the lawsuit. However, a Queen spokesperson says that Ice's statement isn't entirely accurate, stating, quote, an arrangement was made whereby the publishing in the song was shared. Number 2. Love is a Wonderful Thing – Michael Bolton In the early 90s, Michael Bolton found himself in hot water following the release of the hit single Love is a Wonderful Thing. Love, love is a wonderful thing. It turned out that the Isley Brothers, best known for It's Your Thing and Shout, had released a 45 RPM single of the same title back in 1964. Though Bolton and his manager claim to have never heard the original song, it's a little hard to believe when you compare the two singles. The Isley Brothers won their case and were awarded $5 million, which at the time was the highest payout for musical copyright infringement ever awarded. At least we can all agree that love is, in fact, a wonderful thing. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Stairway to Heaven, Led Zeppelin, accused of stealing the intro from Taurus by a band called Spirit. The Old Man 
again down the road. John Fogarty, accused of plagiarizing himself from his CCR days, the Run Through the Jungle Chorus. Oh, I Radiohead, accused of being too similar to the Hollies track, The Air That I Breathe. No cigarettes, no sleep, no light. <laughs> Uptown Funk, Mark Ronson featuring Bruno Mars, accused of stealing from the Gap Band's 1979 song, Oops Upside Your Head. Say oops upside your head, say oops upside your head. I hear the train a coming. It's rolling around a bend. Folsom Prison Blues. Johnny Cash, accused of borrowing melody and lyrics from Crescent City Blues by Gordon Jenkins. I hear the train a coming. It's rolling around the bend. Want more music content? Watch Mojo produces an original podcast taking a behind the scenes look at all things music. The show provides authentic interviews with artists from all around the world, while also staying true to Watch Mojo's roots with top 10 music banter thrown into the mix. What's the best advice Alice Cooper's ever given you? Looking back at the staying power, does it shock you? Uh, no, we have naked pictures of the right people. If you want exclusive interviews with award-winning artists, producers, singers, songwriters, check out Inner Sleeve. Number one, Blurred Lines, Robin Thicke featuring T.I. and Pharrell Williams. Remember 2013, when all you heard all year was this song? Well, Marvin Gaye's family heard it too, and they were not too pleased. In 2013, Gaye's family filed a lawsuit, claiming that the hit single copied from Marvin Gaye's Got to Give It Up. To the untrained ear, the opening of both songs is strikingly similar, as is the rhythm. Gay's family was triumphant and were awarded approximately $5 million, as well as half of all future royalties blurred lines accrues. I'm so filled with emotion right now that it's hard to get the words out, but um... This, this was a miracle. One thing we can say from this and some of the other lawsuits featured in this list, do not mess with Marvin Gaye's music. Legal analysts say this verdict sends a loud message to the music industry. I think this is gonna lead any musician who's been inspired by another song to think twice, because this is a big legal ruling. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.